what tokenization is? It's a good question because people um, right now associate tokenization with ICOs. And ICOs have been crazy and uh, everybody was yeah, doing that or investing or hating or whatever. So nobody was left behind by ICO topic. But tokenization is something that is, I believe, is much uh, deeper trend where the whole financial industry will be transformed. I will just present a few thoughts about what may happen and why and how blockchain is related to that and what to expect. So my key thoughts will be like why tokenization matters at all, um, how we are going to like come from chaos to an order and where is blockchain. First of all, is um, why people are talking about tokenization at all. And um, obviously it started from ICOs. And um, the key things here were that people were trying to repeat the success of Bitcoin or Ethereum or other coins when they invested in cents and received like huge amounts of money. And we see a lot of millionaires, even billionaires in the blockchain space um, and this wealth appeared like suddenly from nowhere. And people thought that, people still thinking that's a new reality when wealth can be yeah, created from out of thin air. Yeah, obviously it's not always like that and uh, we will see bumps and dumps. And, but there are other things that are very interesting. And um, the whole tokenization and ICO craze showed that it's not only like greed, obviously greed is the first when people want to get to make money. But second is that it's really easy for investors and companies to issue tokens and sell them and um, bring capital in the company. And that shows the like trend when the whole investment banking industry will be transformed because nobody will accept the uh, like the reason, oh, that we should do KYC for a month for you, or the transfer takes 30 days. It, it, now it seems ridiculous. In blockchain world, you can like take your like, Bitcoin and invest in 20 minutes and then trade the token that you've just bought in like next minute. And it's really convenient. And we will see digital KYC, we will see how all these processes are transformed and uh, the whole like industry will yeah, benefit from that. Then it, it's important that at the end of the day, it's infrastructure play. It's infrastructure for um, for the custodians, for exchanges, for client software as wallets, etc. And this infrastructure is basically integrated. Like Ethereum is a good example. It is a wallet. It is an exchange. It is a custodian, all in the same, like in one thing. And you can buy Ether and invest, and smart contract will get you tokens and yeah, it's really convenient. And it's without borders, so that's what matters. That's actually, um, that's the biggest, the biggest threat for, financial, for current order, because right now governments are not happy with that, that anyone can invest um, in a second without doing any KYC. So, uh, but we will have this type of infrastructure. So yeah, regulation will somehow come <coughs> in a different ways, maybe from government, maybe from community, but it, it will appear. But what we'll have is software and infrastructure that has no borders, and the whole world will turn into the global exchange. And here is the interesting thing that uh, right now we see chaos, and um, we will go into order. And how chaos looks like? It's in Russian, but it will translate for those who don't understand. Uh, that was the advertisement from one of the ICOs. And they they did all they made all the mistakes um, they could. Uh, basically, they said Ethereum is going down. Invest in us. I mean, why? I mean, second, they say that their token will always go up, only. And they say that economists said the proof the token will go up. Now, then they said it's last chance. Then they said. Everybody else has already participated, and then they made a joke like that even a beer um, can you know, get rich with that. So uh, this is the type of chaos when the same thing happened during 
20s in the US with this, yeah, penny stocks, etc. So now we have the same with uh, tokens. When uh, Facebook will be have problems because of that, because it's it's advertising of securities basically, because they explicitly say that it will go up, so they make promises that cannot be sustained. And uh, <clears throat> the order will mean that we will have a new type of banks, new type of financial infrastructure. New, I put banks in because it's not really banks. New type of accounting systems, new type of custodies, new type of exchanges, new regulation. And we see right now already, like Coinbase became a biggest uh, Bitcoin bank. It is an exchange, it is a bank, it is a custodian at the same place. It's not good, obviously, because Coinbase can you know, take your coins and go away. But we see appearance of decentralized structures where all the assets are handled um, in a multi-seek and you cannot steal it. And uh, Lightning Network is another example of um, like a new infrastructure when transactions are separated from settlement in a secure way. So right now, Visa is the same thing. Transactions are one layer and settlement another layer, but uh, you can do fraud with that. But when transactions are separated, you can do it fast, but if it's, you don't need to trust the, the whole thing, that it's really great invention. So Lightning Network is one example how this infrastructure will be changed. And the other result of the order will be that um, everything will become predictable. Uh, predictable like who is going to be on the market, which type of players, um, how many of them, then what type of licenses, I, like it could be licenses, like uh, proof of stake is also a type of a license because you put your coins and they can be taken from you. Then uh, TCO will be predictable, total cost of ownership and return of investment. So within a few years, the industry will stabilize and we will see that, okay, it's going to be like ready for institutional money because right now it's not. And uh, what exactly will be ready for that? We believe it's uh, basically tokenization. And what tokenization means that every asset will be represented by a token. A token is just, it's not a magic. It's just a digital balance that it's backed by something. You can have money, you can have stocks, whatever you want. <clears throat> and tokenization itself is just basically process of transformation of accounting and management, which means that it's about software. It's again about infrastructure that you use. You can compare that this shift uh, from current state to tokenization as um, coming from paper era to digital era, when every assets will be fully digitized. What I mean fully digitized, they will be managed by private keys. So you can have a key in your wallet and this key will be managing your asset in, in the ledger. The same way as Bitcoin is working right now. So we have a key and that's it. And um, there are many benefits we will see, I'll show them a little bit later. And we believe that every asset in the world will be tokenized. First of all, fungible assets, like money, stocks, real estate, loyalty, um, ownership rights, etc. So something that you can substitute easy. And then it means that every accounting system in the world will be using uh, some software that allows to manage these assets by cryptographic key. And that's it's really an astonishing fact because it means that we will need to replace a lot of software and then it will become uniform. How it, like just an example, right now if you go to any website, you can do it from any device and you can use any browser. But if you want to manage your assets, like for if you're a customer of uh, you know Deutsche Bank, you can have a Deutsche Bank app, right? If you're a customer of Wells Fargo, you have a Wells Fargo app. And then you can, if a customer of private bank, private bank app. It's really, you cannot use one app with another bank. And it's stupid because it looks like you have to use uh, like different browsers every time you want to visit different websites, which doesn't make sense. So. It, at the end, we will have really integrated infrastructure, which we call financial internet, where all accounting systems can talk to each other freely, and actually there should not be uh, yeah, transaction costs. 
like transaction that's when somebody takes this. At the uh, previous beep, um, I was presenting about digitization. I, we didn't call tokenization like that time. And I raised a question, what is a token? That time, my answer was, uh, it's basically a combination of stock, money, and accounting item. But at the same time, it's not a stock, it's not money, it's not real accounting, because you have these problems. And um, yeah, these questions, um, I thought about them for the like past half a year, really, really deep. I spent um, hundreds of hours talking to very smart people, some of them in this room, uh, about how this is going to work. And uh, first um, like conclusion was that <coughs> native tokens on like um, tokens of IC like ICOs, um, they make sense if the startup operates in a fully decentralized environment when economy is uh, closed, so basically there is no import or export, like at least uh, it's limited, when you need to protect from censorship and control, and when you need actually to manage your monetary um, economy, monetary policy. Which means like game is the best example. All games have closed economy, that they, they could be decentralized, um, and you have to control your monetary supply. Uh, obviously, for companies who produce some things um, or provide some limited services, tokenization in the form of internal currency doesn't make sense because it's just waste of yeah time. So we will see many tokens disappear from the coin market cap because it have no sense. But for these things, but that's not that's not all. There's just one conclusion: how to like when token is needed. And then we come to the question. How are we going to categorize that? And what is the theory behind uh, when tokens are needed, what type of tokens? And it brings some question, what is a digital asset? And what types of digital assets can exist? Before that, we'll, we'll see that all, all traditional assets will be tokenized and virtual economy. So the previous example was about virtual economy. And every accounting system, that's really, it gets really interesting. Every accounting system has a few processes in it. Processes like governance, like custody or storage of keys, processes like transacting and exchange, issuance and distribution, and audit. These things are, <clears throat> like if you look at Bitcoin, they all, like uh, managed by the same piece of code that's installed on your computer. If you look at the traditional financial infrastructure, custody is uh, one organization with special license. Issuance is like central bank, another an organization. Payment systems, another, and audit is an, another organization. So they're all separated. And governance, yes, yeah, usually, yeah, state provides the governance. When it gets to digital assets, it becomes interesting because uh, you can create assets that were not were not there before, and uh, all these processes from here they could be executed in a centralized way. That's what people believed before 2008, before Bitcoin. People saw that yeah, that's always centralized. When Bitcoin appeared, it made it was clear that okay now. Issuance is decentralized, right? Distribution decentralized due to mining. Transaction processing is decentralized. And audit is decentralized because everybody can look at the Bitcoin blockchain and see what's going on. And now we see currencies that where governance is decentralized. When, like, in Bitcoin, it's, like, a little bit questionable because um, you need to, like, reach consensus. And this consensus is not always the... It's not always efficient. So like Ethereum provided this DAO case, yeah, when Vitalik just said, okay, let's do that. But we, we see currencies where governance is really decentralized. And what is interesting that if you try to come from the other side, plus there is another type of the process which is like not applicable. You can say audit is not applicable at all. When we understood that, we thought, wow, that's great, because, like just a few examples, when all processes are centralized, you receive central bank currency, easy, when one organization does everything. Decentralized Bitcoin, when 
everything is decentralized except audit, you receive Monero. When you say everything is decentralized, but audit is centralized, which is a really interesting case. It's, it will be like Z, Z, Zcash if initial parameters were not destroyed. So when group of developers can actually see what's going on. And you can create such things. When uh, governance issuance is centralized and the rest is decentralized, you receive Ripple, uh, digital currency, basically. Uh, land registry will be another yeah, example when yeah, custody is impossible because there's land. This web of trust, you have another case. So what we thought about is basically like it's a, you could create like a periodic table and say we can actually synthesize an asset knowing what kind of properties it can possess. So the, there are five um, processes. Each of uh, them can have three states. Again, centralized, decentralized, and impossible. And you receive um, 729 possible options. So some of them were listed there. So probably people in the future will create more. And just, it's just one um, idea how to do classification of these assets. So what we will see that there will be interesting outcomes when digital assets will not be um, classified as just currencies or securities or yeah, digital collectibles, etc. They will be classified more like what kind of properties we want to achieve from this particular asset? Is it backed by something? Is it maybe not? Uh, what are the principles of governance, of audit, etc.? And people will say, oh, this type of asset, we need specifically this type of asset for our use case. So I'm pretty sure that guys who created Monero, they didn't think about that. They just wanted to apply cool crypto and make uh, the crypto anonymous. But when you see, basically, it's, it's about audit. You cannot audit transactions. Um, there is no like chain that shows uh, how money goes, and with with that cash that could be like if you create a broken that cash, you receive situation when only one party can can do that. So uh, it's exciting times, and uh, obviously people are asking you know, like how it's related to blockchain. And um, I had, to be honest, I had no answer until this summer. And even my partners, like I remember the discussion with Vladimir, we were um, driving from Kiev to Kharkiv a few months ago, and he said, like, Pavel, can you tell me um, why blockchain is needed at all? And I said, like, um, let me, you know, let me have lunch first, and I will think, and in two hours I, I started to do that, like, uh, to provide some answers. And um, if you think about centralized systems, like we need that as well, like because of um, we need all kinds of assets. Sometimes with centralized government, sometimes without, because of the nature of assets. You cannot say everything should be everything should be decentralized because it will not make sense. It's like saying we just need only gold. We don't need silver. We don't need copper. We don't need whatever kalium. So they all need it for different cases. And if we start from a centralized systems, like warehouse management system with these warehouse receipts, blockchain can be used and it should be used at the end because it provides you with certain security features. These security features are audibility, integrity, robustness, and non-repudiation. And it means that um, it makes sense to apply blockchain as a technology, even in centralized use cases. And it means that if the system wants to grow and bring more partners on board, then blockchain is a must because then it achieves the situation when multiple parties who don't trust each other can work together securely. So blockchain is indeed needed. And uh, that's like, that's, at least it's proof for me. And um, sometimes I'm happy when people say, oh, uh, it's a centralized system, uh, database is like, why do you use blockchain? And you should not use blockchain. I said, like, I am happy because I have like time to like to deliver. So it's a market advantage, basically. Um, so that's basically it.